unless you yeah, ask us to unmute. All right, here we go. Okay, do you guys see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. Let me see if I can do this. All right. So, welcome everybody. This is uh, the first blindfold online class. Most people who teach the online, uh, I mean the the blindfold technique do not want to teach it online because it's very challenging. It's just not the same thing. And I just want to uh, give you a, a, a kind of an overall idea about the different methodologies out there and why or what is different today or, or uh, how we are approaching uh, this uh, methodology. So as far uh, in home, uh, I have investigated several techniques and I, and I have tried different techniques myself. And I found, um, you know, some people are kind of still, excuse me, uh, one second. Yeah, I did it so that uh, you can come in without me having to. So, so next time, even though I have it set up, but if you please try to come on time, perhaps I'm slow. Anyway, all right. So I was saying that um, different techniques that I investigated are vibra vision, for vision, ice view, uh, and also there is a gentleman in in Russia whose own thing. Uh, so just very briefly, uh, vibra vision is basically on the idea that everything is vibration. And so if you are able to increase vibration, so in, and, and everything around you is vibration, then you're able to sense through the vibration what these are, what your, um, what your environment eventually, when you become so, so, so sensitive, uh, that you pick up the shape of that and eventually you can identify what the object is. So that's kind of how it works, how it's based. They're very, very successful, especially with visually impaired uh, folks. Um, so that's kind of what they do, but it's very intense and uh, it has to be done in person, obviously, because of the vibration issue. Um, InfoVision, that one that we have a little bit featured in the movie because we had a case study. We had a person who went through the class and uh, the, the whole the program, and she was able to, she had macular degeneration, and that was her focus, and she was able to, through this technique, uh, increase, uh, enhance, or actually improve her, her condition tremendously. And so, uh, but the way this uh, technique really works is more of a natural thing. It's kind of like you do a few exercises and then you just let the process happen. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more as we begin the exercise ourselves. Um, it's basically uh, based on the idea that uh, you can, you know, tell your brain to start to see different and eventually you do. But there's not a specific method, like it's not, there's not specific, there's some exercises, but I felt like it wasn't, um, like it was missing some components. For example, what your consciousness was doing, how the, how the, your, your blocks were, were coming up, like deal with things you were feeling and, and how to discern. So, so that's a little bit uh, what InfoVid does. I see you, um, that's the lady in Britain, and she, she only teaches, but I really, really love her approach because she's very specific with the way she directs the intent of the children. And, and, but basically, that technique is based on, on the idea that you can sense not just, uh, or you can see, rather, not just your brain or your eyes, but see through every cell in your body. So you basically... Um, give visualization to the children that there is light outside of you. There's light everywhere. Of you. There's light inside your eyes, inside your brain, but also inside your body. And so if you're able to tap into that light, then you can see even if your eyes are closed. So that's their technique. Now, I have not studied with him, uh, but I have investigated his technique and, and uh, other folks I know. His technique, he's been doing it for, for a very long time. 
and it's very, very uh, happy for adults. Uh, his technique is very, it's like, it's, it's a whole month. It's two hours every single day. Uh, it's really hard training. Um, and so, like, this works. That's the problem. It's like, uh, you know, it's a little bit uh, more of a, of, a, of a training. It's not so easy with kids. Like I said, I was just saying, tell them after five minutes the color, and they just tell you. you know? And so, so uh, but Nicola has been extremely successful with adults uh, because of this rigorous training. So anyway, uh, I am personally interested in the mechanism, science. you know, if there is such a science behind this, because for those who know me and for those who don't know me, um, I have been working in the field of consciousness for 20 years in myself since I was five years old. I can see the subtle energy. I, I could see what's on the other side of the wall. I, I could sense what was happening with the person. I would just look at them. Uh, and I would see what would happen the next day. They'll tell me this happened the next day. So, so I was already tapped into that sort of mechanism spontaneously my entire life. Uh, but I wanted to know how. <laughs> I wanted to know how I was doing it. I didn't want to just tell people, oh, I can do this or this is possible. And so because if you know how, then you can teach it. And so that's the reason why I took a long, long time to go inside my brain, go into inside my consciousness to figure out when I saw something that ended up being correct, how, what did my brain do? What did my consciousness do? What did my breathing do? And so I kept, you know, a log of everything that worked, you know, what type of meditation works because there's you know, transcendental meditation, there's that meditation, there's, you know, all kinds of meditation. And people tell you, oh, I feel expanded, I feel this, I feel that. But I was like, well, how do you know? <laughs> you know, how do you know that you are expanded to the universe? I mean, you know, so I started to kind of, in, you know, feel it and experience it in my body, in every cell in my body, in what my brain was doing when I was, for example, merged with uh you know the neighborhood around me then it was the whole planet then it was the whole then it was the moon then it was the it was the planetary system then it was the galaxy it was the universe every time it was a different feeling it was a different uh, you know it, it, was, it was like uh, something changing every time and that's how i knew that i need to do that if i wanted to connect with the universe and if i wanted to connect with the moon i had to do this you see so it took me a long time. That's what I meant earlier. I'm very technical. Like I want to know step by step how this works. And so I developed a whole methodology uh, for uh, not just meditation, but again, for people who recognize this as remote viewing. But for me, I call it the merging technique. Uh, when you travel through time and space to tap into any information, so I called it the Omnia method. So you can go to my website for those who don't know, carolinecorey.com, and you'll see all kinds of classes um, on how to expand the consciousness and meditation and this and that. So why am I telling you all this? <laughs> I'm telling you all this because all of this training applies to what we're doing today. The, and that's what I felt was missing. And this is no criticism at all. I'm just saying that what I feel was missing um, and what I wanted to investigate is, wait, you know, we're not really being told as we're training what the brain is actually doing or what, um, even though we, we can't measure it yet, uh, but I can tell you, like, focus on this part of the brain or go to this part of the brain. You see what I mean? Or in the breathing, there's a lot, the, the breathing is not, always taken into account although with vibra vision they really really stress on that also they don't because i the methodology has to do with energy healing i mean that's what i've did, done for 20 years and so how to read the subtle energy of the subconscious mind uh that is how you change uh, a pattern you know if you have a chronic um uh, migraines or whatever it is that you're struggling with or some a psychological problem unless you see what 
the block is in your subconscious mind, uh, you will not be able to, to overcome this problem. And so, so I noted for those who took my previous class on telekinesis and remote viewing and all of that, you know, we address the blocks because as you start doing these things, things, uh, you know, something new that you've never done before, such as now the blindfold, things are going to come up, <laughs> you know, and if you don't address them, they're going to be in the way. And so that's the reason why, so these types of felt were not addressed. And that's why I felt like this needs to be part of this training as well. Uh, I, I also incorporate meridian points. Uh, you'll see it's, it's very subtle, but what, when necessary, we work with some meridian points to open uh, certain pathways as you feel a block coming and things like that. And um, really, it's, it's, a, it's basically the, the method um, that I'm going to teach is, is the same principle, like I said, of everything else I've been teaching for 20 years, which is you are basically reprogramming yourself. You are reprogramming your brain to do something that it's never done before. Your brain knows how to see. You didn't learn how to see. You came into this world knowing how to see. But now, all of a sudden, you're asking it to see in a different way. You're asking it to, um, to change that pattern that you've had for years and years and years and years and, and, and taking it for granted, you know, that, hey, this is possible. So it's a whole reprogramming that I feel needs to take place. And reprogramming means your belief system, means your, your, um, your, 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 um, uh, your emotions, your feelings, everything. You have to take everything into account. And also, um, <clears throat> you're basically also changing your perception of reality as you are uh, doing this technique. And so that's the reason why I felt confident, even though the blindfold training itself it's not my, like, it's not like I made it up, right? obviously, as you can see, it's been out there for years and years and years and years. But I feel confident that, you know, this is just an extension of everything else that, you know, we've been working on. And for those who just did the, the telekinesis class with me or the remote, remote viewing, you'll see it's the, the principle is pretty much the same. You are learning something that you've never, uh, you're making your brain behave in a way that's never behaved before. So. And then another thing <laughs> that I think you should know, for those who don't know me uh, in that way, who have not studied with me, uh, I can, I as I can see what, you know, what's happening. When I teach, I can actually see what you're doing. It's, it's almost like I can, I don't go into your brain, <laughs> but I, I, I kind of, uh, and so I can see what you're doing wrong, that it's making you not see or that's making you not succeed so for example in the movie you saw kim the exercise and uh, your teacher which was not me was was uh, mihaela she was uh, in provision so i was sitting in the other room and because we you know we were filming obviously and so uh so kim was basically l uh, listening to training with uh, right you saw in the film but I was focused on Kim, and when she didn't get it wrong, uh, when she didn't get it right, I could see what she was doing wrong. And I would tell her, I would say, and Kim has studied with me before, so she knew what I was talking about. I would say, well, you keep seeing purple because you're seeing the, uh, your mind's eye. You're not seeing, you're, you, you're not actually seeing the color. You're not attempting to see the actual color, you are um, looking through your pineal gland. You know, it's like, it's per and usually that's the color you see, it's purple. Uh, so I would tell her how to stop looking, stop using that pineal gland uh, uh, projection, if you will, of color, and to, to try to look through the holes of the, you know, whatever. So, and then when she did that, she would get it right. And then uh, another thing, when uh, Michaela was showing her letter, that was the best, I mean, that was crazy thing. So in fact, she was blown away. <laughs> and so um, 
you know, so I was looking at what Kim was doing and I was, uh, and I could see, first of all, the mind could see the talking, you know, I can see the belief systems that were popping up. So I would tell her, well, you're, you think it's impossible or your quest, you're asking, should I do it this way or should I do it that way? And so I, I told her, just choose one way and just do it. And then I would tell her to do the merging technique, which I teach uh, if the other one didn't work. And then when she did that, she got it right every single time. So my point is, for those who don't know me, <laughs> the advantage is I can see what you're saying. And because of that, this training uh, will be more specific. I, you know, uh, it will help you uh, in that way that I have not seen in other classes. So hopefully this, this works. There's somebody else trying to come in. Let me finish this and then I'll let them in. Uh, so uh, the, the last thing here is, uh, you know, managing your expectations. Like I said, um, you know, as, a, as an adult, it's much, much, much harder. I'm not being negative. I am just being realistic. Uh, and that is because you basically took longer to do see with your eyes and you, you basically have done what you're doing with your sight your entire life and so whereas kids they're still learning they're still kind of not so much the eyesight but they're learning about life in general and so and they're so open and excited and so it's so much easier so with adults it's much uh, it's a longer process uh, your intention that's another thing that I did not feel it was addressed in other techniques um, your intention has to be very clear. Why are you doing this? Do you, do you want to do it just to, you know, like to, to uh, just prove that you can do something superhuman or do you want to, like, why are you doing it? That clarity is very, very important. This sounds minimal, but it is important. And, and just know this is a lengthy process. I told you, Nikola, um, in Russia, he trains one month, two hours a day, nonstop, and it's like exhausting. So I'm not going to make you do that, obviously, but it is going to take a, a, a longer time, and it's going to you're it's going to require that you practice. You know, I set it up once a week, but I think actually it's not a good idea. I think it's better to do it every other day, to do a class every other day, just so that you keep doing this over and over without leaving a big gap. But we're gonna try that. We're gonna try this first week. Um, we're gonna try uh, um, to do as much as possible to give you enough exercises and things to do for the week. But then next week, if, if it looks like you can't keep it up or it's better, we may have to change the schedule. So, you know, we're getting together uh, every two, three, three days or something to make sure that you keep it up. Because I actually, by the way, one of the time, one of the times where I got myself to see with the, with the blindfold and then I completely stopped because I was doing the film actually. <laughs> and so I, I was in post-production I had no time and I was running around and I had all kinds of deadlines. And I, and, and then when I started again, like three months later, I had to start all over again. So just for you to know that this is not, uh, you know, something that you just pick up whenever you feel like it. It's, you know, like you, if you are serious about this, you're going to have to put the time in and know that it has to, it will take regular practice and nonstop practice until you get it down to a point where, oh, you know exactly where to go, what your brain is doing in order to, um, um, to, to, to get there. Um, another quick thing, well, I'm not gonna talk about the, the way it comes uh, because we'll, we'll, I'll talk about it as we start the exercises, but um, you know, of course, letting go of the outcome, you know, we set the intent, but then we just let go because we stress ourselves out. This is kind of a no brainer. And then, of course, we're going to talk about how to prepare for a session, um, and we're going to actually do it together today. All right, so let me just see this person wants to come in. Hold on. All right, okay. Um, I'm not going to let anybody in after this. 
All right, guys, so I hope this is starting to, so preparing for a session, as you can see, um, obviously, we want to be in a quiet space. We want to have a light source in front of us. We want to prepare all the props beforehand so you don't have to get up in the middle of the thing. Uh, we're going to do a specific type of meditation, which uh, you will see is similar to the telekinesis and other things. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of breathing, not much, but every time I will show you uh, different types of breathing. Uh, for, for now, it's going to be pretty basic. And then, um, and then as you, before you begin, because we're still preparing, we haven't started yet, uh, things, like I said, will come up. So uh, for, if you've take, just finished the class of telekinesis, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those who are new, uh, you will start to, things will ha happen. Like you will feel anxious or you'll feel uncomfortable. Or you will feel like I, I ha I've had people who, put the mask on and they felt claustrophobic. And so we have to address all of this and I'll guide you through it. I'll tell you how to, to make sure you're feeling all these feelings and how to address them. And then we'll do specific guided exercises. Okay, so I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna we're gonna work with, uh, I mean, I, I'm gonna, we're gonna do that in just a second, but we're, uh, we're gonna work with simple shapes. We're gonna work with colors. We're going to work with letters. And so these are exercises that you can keep doing on your own. Um, and then also we're going to go directly in the 3D environment. So, so meaning that, you know, you're going to not just look at a flat surface because that also does something different with your brain. When you look at a piece of paper uh, with a letter on it, when you look at your, the screen and there's a letter on it or, or a shape on it, it's not the same process as looking at uh, in the environment around you, which is 3D, three-dimensional. It's actually two-dimensional. I mean, you look at it, you don't, you don't see the other side, but you know it is 3D, you know, and your brain behaves slightly differently. And so, and so we're going we're gonna to do a combination of, you know, 3D um, ex experiences and 2D, like a flat surface of shapes and things like that. And, uh, and then we're going to, again, connect and communicate with your mask. I know it sounds weird to a lot of people, but uh, for those who know my work, uh, you have to realize that everything, I don't want to say has consciousness right now and get into that, that whole topic, but it has a, it is a form of energy, whether it was made in a factory in China or anywhere. Uh, it's, and it's made of materials, uh, whether they're organic or not. Most of this material in this mask is probably not organic, I'm sure, uh, with the foam and stuff. But um, I uh, know that the people that have worked to put them on this mask, to create this mask, to design it, to put it, a, you know, to, to create it in a factory, uh, to put it in a, in a packaging, to send it to you, uh, to your, to by mail. All of these people that put their energy on this material object have something to do with the material object. So, and you are still picking up um, a piece of that, of their consciousness in the mask. And so, I know it sounds very far-fetched to many people, but trust me, I've been doing this a very, very long time. Uh, you have furniture that talks back to you. Uh, you have all kinds of your clothes. Everything that seems to be material seems to be finite, that seems to not have a consciousness, still holds information. So it's all information. And why is this relevant? Because you are working with the mask through the mask. So you are information, you're putting out information, you're putting out intention, I want to see through the mask. But wait, but the mask also has information. So I remember when I first tried to move an object, you know, I try to move, you know, on a, on a toothpick, I'm trying to move that piece of paper. And then the piece of paper told me, I don't want to move right now. Or it told me, well, I heard your intention now do this you know i focused on something else and it started to move so so my point is if you learn how to do this and it's actually a lot of fun 
you learn to discern that it's not you projecting. You are not proje- well. That to, that could happen to. I take that back. That could happen to. But if you do this training properly, this merging process with a physical object, and you know how to discern it's not you, it's them, and whatever, you pick up all kinds of stuff. And so, and why is this relevant? Because you're working with a mask. You're 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 partnering with information that normally should not let you see through the mask. The intention of the mask is to black out. Your intention is to see through the blackout. So it's the exact opposite. Does that make sense? And so you have to find a way to align your intention with the purpose of this mask. And if you don't do that, then it's that much harder, if that makes sense. All right. So I hope I hope this this makes sense to to people. But for me, so basically, the minute I I connected with the piece of paper and I knew what it wanted, it worked. I mean, took a little time, but then it worked. And then the next time, I didn't question it. When I changed to a piece of foil or a pencil or whatever that I tried to move, I did the same thing. And then, so as you are retrieving this information and you know how to retrieve this information. You are now in partnership with the physical world. And when you say, I want to master the physical world, you are working together as opposed to defying the laws that that govern the physical world, if that makes sense, okay? Uh, Be patient, relax, enjoy, have fun. There's no test at the end of this. Uh, You know, if nothing happens, nothing happens. But I tell you, at least the minimum that would ha- was going to happen in this class is you will discover things. You will discover things about yourself. You will discover things about your abilities. You will discover all kinds of things. And also, we've, we've noticed a lot of uh, vision improvement. That's why I had you do the eye chart. Um, because even the, if that's not your intention, for some reason, in fact, I didn't even know uh, that this was working, but when I started do, doing this myself, um, I noticed that I could see better, uh, like normal eyesight. So I thought that's interesting. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure about the mechanism or if there's science to back that up. I'm sure there's people are still trying to figure it out. But for some reason, I'm just saying that um, there seems to be some correlation that your eyesight seems to improve. Um, correlation with people who have dyslexia, a correlation with, of course, quieting and concentration, correlation with uh, all kind of self-confidence, especially everything I said for kids. Um, you know, all kind of clarity, confidence, guidance system. So there's all kinds of, uh, you know, um, um, left. Uh, how should I say, it? So, uh, additional if you will, um, improvements and things that that will happen thanks to this technique. So at least that. (laughs) And so so you should just relax and enjoy and see what happens, okay? So I'm going to stop right here. Yep, that's it. And uh, just see, first of all, if we have any questions. Let me see. Somebody's still trying to get in. Wow, okay. Uh, I will not uh, interrupt the class uh, next time once we begin, so please try to be there on time. So, okay, guys, so let me know if you have questions first, and then we will get going. You can unmute yourself. Go ahead, unmute yourself, please, and say something. Hello. Yeah, uh, Dean, go ahead. How much of this do you uh, see as brain? versus mind and i'm making a distinction here between the physical brain and whatever it is that is involved in remote viewing because they're not the same thing yeah and for me i don't know how people use the word mind i i say mind as consciousness is that what you i mean it's it's like part of consciousness let's yeah. say uh to me i feel it's the mind that ends up affecting the brain and not the other way around so, so basically, even if the brain can do these things, but if your 
consciousness and your intention does not tell it exactly to do it this way, it won't do it on its own, if that's what you're asking. Well, so the reason I'm asking is because the level of accuracy to this method is way higher than you typically see in any kind of, of remote viewing effect. Exactly. So if this were something like remote viewing, then you should be able to hold up a piece of paper in the next room and have extremely high accuracy. But given that that is not the case, then it suggests that what's going on here is more like uh, learning to use an electromagnetic sense. In other words, it's, it's not psychic. It may be more physical. No, it is like remote viewing. Then why, fact, is my, why is the yeah. accuracy so much higher than remote viewing? Uh, accuracy of the way I teach it? or No, accuracy in terms of being able to actually see playing cards, for example. Oh, yeah, because, well, actually, if you do remote viewing at one point, like, really well, and learn how to zoom in, you end up having that accuracy. But also, you are, like, the intention is different, because in remote viewing, and of course, the way uh, they teach remote viewing, like, in the military, is slightly different than the way, again, I teach it. In fact, uh, we just did this class, remote viewing, and it's it's very different, because Remote viewing, the way it's taught, and it's called remote viewing by, you know, the military um, way, is you're given a coordinate, and you're trying to describe what's going on there. So it's really like, okay, is there a military base? Is there missiles there? Are there people? Are there soldier? Is Osama bin Laden there? Or whatever, you know. So it's more of a general thing. So whereas, uh, whereas with this, with this, uh, with the blindfold thing, you're being asked to read. You're being asked, you know, like right off the bat, you're you're being asked to focus on something very, very small, very, very accurate, very precise. And but then again, like I said, I heard that some people in remote viewing became so good that they were able to read long distance. So, for example, I can, um, to be honest with you, I am more comfortable seeing on the other side of the planet than seeing through the mask on the on the thing. Because because uh, there is no time space. As, I mean, there is no time space factor, as you know. Mm -hmm. And but the process is the same. So I think I answered your question. This becomes very precise because from the get go, you're being asked to focus on a letter to focus on it. You're not being asked to go find somebody somewhere else. Does that make sense? Anybody else? Somebody else had a question? I have a question. Did you ever explore the EOV method from Mexico? And what's the difference with ICU or any of the, the other ones? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, it's a little bit the same. I personally have not tried. I, I know that, that method. And also, I don't know the one in India either. Um, I, but they talk about the midbrain. They do some sort of activation. They're saying that it's something to do with the midbrain. Um, but I feel like it's somewhat similar to um, to the infravision. I, f I feel like they kind of, you know, took some some things and then continued with their own. But I personally have not investigated that technique. So what else? Anybody else? Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to start. Start also uh, another thing that I wanted to say is that I like to do things very gradually. Like if we're going to move a physical object, you know, let's not already put it in a vacuum, you know, and in the other room and try to move it. Let's first try to move it, you know, touching it almost, feeling it, connecting with it then put a glass, then, you know, move your hands away, you know, like it's a gradual thing. Uh, because I think like, because we are do, training the brain to do something that it's never done before, we want to kind of getting, you know, get used to the idea that it's okay, <laughs> you know, and then if I can do this, then I can do more. If I can do this, then I can do a little bit more. So first, I, uh, I want to start with a little bit of uh, meditation, 
uh, technique, which uh, I'm going to do the one that I teach in the, uh, the telekinesis one that has to do with just aligning the three points. Today, that's the one we're going to do. And then we're going to do a little bit of breathing. This is just to create your space. And then uh, as we begin to set the intent, that's another thing. Maybe even that's a better idea before we even get into this. Can you take a moment to like hold up your mask and just kind of start to kind of feel it out and know that what you are doing is you're going to train your brain to see through these things, you know? And as you say that, what is your intention? Why do you want to do this? Very important. You are not clear on the intention. In fact, I'd like to hear what you think your intention is. Go ahead. Unmute and speak your intention. <laughs> <laughs> 